ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. Intro song. Another main show. Like Wow. 
10 different times. Yeah, when they finally questioned him why he did it, all he said was this. I am inevitable. <laughs> and then he snapped his fingers and they're like, sir, get out of the CVS, would you please? Please get out of the CVS. 10 times he got the fucking gun. Kidding me? He's really boosted up, you know? He's like, mask, what do you mean mask? I got 10 of them. He's in the streets like, you can't stop me. I am Moderna! You know, like, <laughs> dude, you know, what Why? What happened? Um, this is really great, too. Speaking of, we're right next to a church, guys. Give it up for the church. Yeah. Yeah. Feel free to curse if you want to. It's fine. They don't care. We're fine. Um, it's true. But this is, uh, this is a cool thing. An ex-porn star now turned pastor. Um, I'll say that again. An ex-porn star <laughs> now turned into a pastor uh, was stating how his life has changed for the better and that porn is a dangerous to people's uh, health and their families. Oh, yeah. yeah, in one of his homilies, he said, uh, in his words, he said, Christ is the only one that should be coming. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get it? Oh, man! <laughs> oh, man! You know, Mike, these... quarters for very long time. <laughs> so that's just like living in this room when you're just thinking it's awesome. <laughs> that wasn't even that wasn't even a sound effect. That was them being like ah. <laughs> 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 uh, this was cool. A New Yorker this an article was uh she wrote an article a New Yorker moved to South Africa and now lives off of eighty eight dollars a day. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Which is ironic because another girl has moved to New York and just hopes to live. <laughs> I just want to live. I just want to live. What is going on? How much is it the subway? Uh, and speaking of New York, this is a great story. Speaking of New York, uh, a woman gave birth in a Tesla while sitting in traffic in New York City. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The car was a wreck, but the EMT reported that it had that new baby smell. <laughs> It was a Prius. Um, yeah, one of the Prius. Uh, uh, this is cool. A company called Neptune is now offering a six-hour balloon rides to the edge of space for only $125,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you have the money to do that on a date night, uh, please, when you're up there, just fucking jump. Uh, $125,000 to be like, let's touch the edge. Is that what edging is? I think that's what edging is. <laughs> And that's what it is. <laughs> Can you imagine going like a, on a date with a girl and take her up to space and then like at the at the bottom and she's like, I think I just want to be friends. <laughs> We're going back up. We're going back up. Mike, you do that. You would fucking do that. I you would, would totally, totally, totally do that. that. <laughs> you. Fucking but it's fun. I hope you had a good time in space. If you want to bring anybody with you, we can. <laughs> <laughs> if you, you bring friends, it's cool. I'll pay them all. I mean, if they want to bend over you a little bit, but like, I mean, if you want, it's one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. I just sold my house for it. I just want to see space. Uh, this is cool. Stephanie uh, Motto. You guys know her, Stephanie Motto. She's a star from Ninety Day Fiance. She just released a video talking about how she has made over fifty thousand dollars selling her farts in jars. Yeah. Here we are all these years just throwing money away. You know, I could have been making a fortune, you know? Yeah. Wow. Because pandemic farce, you could have made a ton of money. Wow. What is wow. that? Oh, this one. I can smell you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she also she adds like rose petals and perfumes and like makes the jars unique to the person that buys them. Oh. Um, so if you're looking for a perfect Christmas gift, there you go. Oh my god, did you did you get me a candle? This is what the fuck is this? This is not a Yankee. A living room full of jars. She's in a living room full of empty jars. And people come in and they're like, what's up? And she's like, yeah, this is where my part is. I'm a business owner. I'm a business Did she video like your jar getting them? Well, it was a video, she's like a day in the life of a girl that sells her farts. Oh. On TikTok. And it went viral. And then she was adding rose petals and shit to it. 
and was just like, this is what I do, and then she'll like eat beans like all day. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then she's like, if someone requests someone, something else, like I could be like, can you eat a pepperoni pizza from Little Tony's? She would do it, and then fart the job. She gets like stressed out. Someone's like, she's like, I have so much work to do. Like, what are you going to do? She's like, don't even talk to me. I can't talk right now. I've been so bottled up with work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm farting 30,000 jars to this week. Oh my god. Oh, that's amazing. Um, uh, speaking of Christmas, Christmas time, guys. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Happy holidays. Uh, this is cool. A survey showed that the most common Christmas traditions are decorating a tree putting peppermint on everything, and ignoring your family's phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> so, nice tradition, yeah. Phones on silent, phones on silent. Uh, okay, this, this, is, uh, this is actually cool for artists, musicians in the crowd, musicians. Uh, Adele was able to persuade Spotify to take down the shuffle button on all album pages for the artists. Yeah, instead of like hitting shuffle and then seeing like track three and then track nine, you know, which is, which is cool, it's good for the artists, you know, you kind of make the CD for that. Um, so now we can all cry in the perfect order, just like she wanted. Oh, man. 
that way. I love that. Um, I'm so happy to be back, guys. I'm so glad it's Christmas time. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad all the boys are back, you know? Oh, yes, yes. We got the full crew on stage right now. Put some shit on. And uh, one of our other boys who's here every single month with us, and he does a segment on the show that we love every single month. Guys, I want you to get a round of applause. Yeah. Get it going. Get it loud in here. Yes. For fourth and a half with my man Brian and Miss Daniel. Yeah. Hey, 
you feeling over here? You feeling good? Oh, Woo! Yeah. It looks like there's a lot of Halloween cheers. Da, da, da.
like, oh, it's the journey, you know, oh, it's the journey, it's not the destination, Mariah. And why are we taking advice from her? God bless her, but shit's not working out. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, everybody's just taking advice from this woman who's walking around being like, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure it out. <laughs> You know, self esteem. Sure. All I want for Christmas is a good sense of self. You know, all I want for Christmas is like, you know, an intrinsic value. You know, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all get it. And then, um, oh, what's that other song? Um, uh, uh, the, oh, j Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle bell time and jingle bells are coming, showing and flowing and lots of stuff. That one is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, y'all! Somebody was playing that store was in an old navy. <laughs> you know those stores are fun. So I'm in an old navy. Cause I love when I go places and people acknowledge you. Think about all the places y'all go to throughout the day. Everyone's like. You know, we're all just walking around and ignoring each other. And then everybody's complaining on the internet, being like, oh, nobody likes to have connection. Yeah. Well, that maybe freaking say hello to somebody <laughs> next time you see them. <laughs> Thank you. This beautiful woman knows what I'm talking about. Look somebody in the eye. You know what I mean? Like, just say hello. You know, no one's asking you to marry him or go on vacation with them, okay? <laughs> So that's why I love Old Navy, because you walk in and everyone's like, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? You know, they were pal down. Oh, how are you? Yeah. And you're in there just trying on jeans when they show up. But that's nice, because I like to ask questions when I'm trying on jeans. Okay. So, um, I love that song, Jingle Bell Rock. That's just, it's a, what they call bangers. And that's what they say. They're like, oh, that's a banger. Oh. Uh, here was another song, y'all, that I was just like, what are we doing? This is like wacky tacky. Was that song, um, uh, 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 run, run, Rudolph, Santa's got to make it to town, you know? And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> it sounds to me like Santa didn't properly plan. <laughs> How rude. Oh, now I have to rush because you didn't plan appropriately? It is the holidays. I'm not rushing anywhere, okay? What is that? You know, and it's like, take a clue, you know, Santa. I mean, really, like, look around, right? Right now, everybody is like, we're all finally, like, coming around being like, oh, corporations, bad, <laughs> right? You know? And it's like, oh, if you're going to, like, you only have, what, nine reindeer, you know? And how long have you had these employees? They have worked for you for generations, okay? Respect them. I feel like I lost y'all at the end of the <laughs> That's okay, y'all, because I'm literally just making all this up. But here is, here is what I do want to leave y'all with. And this is real, real. I don't think there's any jokes here. But it is. It's the holiday season, and everybody just slow down. Think about all of the things that you're taking in. Everybody loves to talk about, oh, I'm eating this, or oh, I'm not eating that. No one cares, and it's not a personality, okay? But just think about what it is that you're taking in. Why do you sing the songs that you sing? Why do you engage with the people that you engage with? And open your eyes and stop blaming Twitter. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas, y'all! Yeah, this yeah. is my uh, my dead mother-in-law's sweater. Uh, shut up. She, she's dead and it's cool. Right? So it's not. It's funny. She. <laughs> I feel like you needed to ease them into that. Just from the ooze. That's the egg I'm talking. I think. Oh my God. Ooh, ooh. It's funny. But it looks right. It Thank looks you. Right. And yeah. she, this is this is when she used to want to get sexy. She put this on, so I was like, I'll wear that tonight. That'll be good for me. 
and now it's made it awkward. You look very sexy. Don't you look sexy without all that? I thought I had a good one. I thought yeah. I had a good one in my in the car on the way home. I'm gonna talk about my dead mother-in-law. Yeah. Like, really split the room on that one. <laughs> it's not your fucking dead mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the show without the show. <laughs> the show without the show. I uh. Oh my god. Guys. Oh. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Fearless, Fearless. Um, so what do you need? Bobby, flying, and together we're flying a box. Yeah! Oh my yeah. God. This is amazing. What would you two like for Christmas? Two Teslas, <laughs> a million dollars, and a, a top ten billboard hit. Yeah! Yeah! Yay! I mean, <laughs> you a pregnancy test? Or? <laughs> Thanks, thanks. 
<laughs> well, if you've never given platinum before, I call you Fortune 500 fucking CEO. Uh, the, first, the first time you get platinum, you'll know, the first time you get platinum, it's like four hours, right? It takes like four, they give you a physical, an interview, you have to answer a bunch of questions, it takes like four hours the first time. And uh, one of the questions they have for you is, do you have any tattoos? Remember that? Yeah, and uh, I had to look this 35 year old female nurse in the face and say, yeah. He says successful. <laughs> <laughs> on my forearm. <laughs> now can you take my blood for money, bitch? Let's do your job. <laughs> All these fucking questions, you know? <laughs> I had to quit my job for the same reason. To scan groceries for eight hours a day. With the word successful on your arm. <laughs> it's fucking soul crushing. You know? <laughs> Just, <laughs> 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 I was me killing myself at the end of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's expensive to kill yourself in California. You guys know that? It's true, man. It costs at least 10 cents to kill yourself here. It's true, you gotta buy that fucking plastic bag everywhere. It's nice over there. <laughs> right. That joke's only for me. It's only for me. That's all that is. Because <laughs> I watched one person in the back go, what does he mean to? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 <laughs> Uh, COVID's been tight. You guys like COVID? Woo! Give yeah. up for COVID! Fuck yeah. yeah. COVID's the best year of my life, bro. Hands down. The government was paying me to drink and fish. <laughs> that's a win, you know? <laughs> I had no idea that's what unemployment was. I was on that shit a long time ago. <laughs> my favorite part of COVID in the beginning was all the commercials, though. Like the TV commercials. Like, we're in this together, fucking Honda. <laughs> Well, I don't think so, Honda. Yeah. <laughs> the best one, though, by far was Papa John's. I don't know if you guys remember this, but in the beginning of the pandemic, Papa John's had a commercial that went like this. They were like, here at Papa John's, ever since COVID, we don't touch your pizza from the minute it goes in the oven until it gets to your house. What the fuck were you doing to my pizza before COVID? <laughs> <laughs> Did you start COVID, Papa? <laughs> like, what? Uh, yo, Tony, you got a pizza? Oh yeah, he said it with mushrooms on it. I'm putting my dick on it real quick. <laughs> 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 it's fucking gross. Uh, <laughs> How come there's no weed strain called COVID-19? <laughs> we just make a million dollars. <laughs> there's not, I've checked, there's no weed strain named COVID or anything like that. We got weed, we got weed named Bin Laden. That's real. But we don't have coronavirus kush. <laughs> what happened to never forget? Yeah. Oh, too soon? Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, the coronavirus push stuff there, corona strain of push, it would sell itself. If you need no marketing for it, makes you cough. Boom, right there. <laughs> Cow, you, know, you, know? you walk into the dispensary and they're like, bro, I got this new corona strain, bro. You hit this shit one time, you can't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hit this shit two times, bro, you can't see your family. <laughs> Don't hit it three times, though, because your grandparents will die. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Tisa, that one might not be too soon. That one might not be too soon. <laughs> oh, he'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> all you do is like watch TV, you know, during quarantine is all you do. So I got like all the free trials. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the free trials. Does anybody know how to cancel a fucking free trial? <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of the joke. I'm just going broke. I need help. I need help. Uh, <laughs> No, I don't know how to cancel them, so what I do is I play this fun game where uh, when I get paid, I run to the ATM to take out all my money before they can take out their money. <laughs> you know what I mean? You cancel it, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's a fun game, but every time one of them wins, like one, of the, one of the subscriptions beats me to my money, you know? It'll be like, one month I'll have like Hulu, you know, one month I'll have like YouTube Premium, you know, one month I'll have car insurance. <laughs> it's a fun game. It's a dangerous game. It's a fun game. Uh, I did. I binge watched a lot of cooking shows during quarantine. You guys like cooking shows? Like the and show? I used to love those shows. I did until I binge watched them, and I realized that uh, the, they're prejudiced against poor people. Oh. It's true. I promise. Watch it again. Whenever they open their baskets, the ingredients they have to cook with in those shows is always for rich people. Every fucking time, they're like, "Open your baskets. You'll find black garlic." <laughs> And foie gras. <laughs> and saffron. What the fuck is saffron? 
You guys got that shit in your fridge? Nah. <laughs> nah, me neither, dude. I wish they do one episode for poor people. You know, it's like chopped broke edition. <laughs> like, open your baskets, you'll find batteries. <laughs> <laughs> baking soda. Taco Bell fire packets. <laughs> Now make some shit. Be <laughs> a lot harder, wanna? <laughs> I wanted to click along with those guys. So I went on this website. This is a real website. You guys can look it up. It's called whatsinyourfridge.com, right? On uh, whatsinyourfridge.com, you type in everything you have in your kitchen, and it tells you what you can make, right? Like the entrees and shit, right? Uh, so I typed in. I, I spent like nine hours putting everything I had in my kitchen, because you know, I'm a slow typer and an alcoholic. <laughs> Takes a long time. I thought you had to put the pans in. You know, just the food. <laughs> I got to the bottom of this list and I clicked submit and this little chef guy popped up and he was like, congratulations, Josh. Tonight, you'll either be making spaghetti or meth. <laughs> <laughs> and I had meth last night. Meth <laughs> <laughs> so again, dude. I'll leave you guys with I grew up with a stepdad, anybody else? <laughs> nope, but the billionaires are great fucking parents. Man. That's fine, they're really awesome, cool. Well, I grew, I grew up with a stepdad. I didn't really like my stepdad that much. Uh, not for any reason or anything. He was just fucking my mom. <laughs> I don't want to hang out. You know what I mean? You do your thing. I do mine. Uh, but my, my stepdad used to like to hunt a lot. And I don't like to hunt. Uh, so we went fucking hunting a lot. And, uh, my stepdad took me and my best friend hunting for graduation. Uh, like it was a gift. Uh. Snot. Nah. <laughs> if you're fucking my mom, I'm a Honda Civic with people. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like 800 bucks, dude, pull me up, you know? <laughs> But we go hunting for graduation. We get done with the hunt, we didn't get anything. We're setting up the fire. As we're setting up the fire, a bear walks into the camp, right? And my stepdad jumps in between me and my best friend and this bear and starts wrestling this fucking bear. Yeah, and the bear starts beating the shit out of my stepdad. Because <laughs> he's a bear. <laughs> and the bear gets on top of my stepdad and with tears in his eyes, he looks back and he goes, everything's gonna be okay, son. I said, thanks, Brian. <laughs> it <was a> reflex, <laughs> you know. If I go back, if I go back to one moment, my stepdad, you know, because he died. He, I'm just kidding. He didn't die. Relax. He didn't die. <laughs> if I go back to one moment, my stepdad would be that moment, you know, because he raised me. He's a good guy. You know, he'd be underneath the bear, tears, and everything's gonna be okay, son. I tell him I really felt or something, you know. I'd be like, you're not my fucking dad. <laughs> Nah, I'd probably say something cool, like, you can do it, man. Kill him. <laughs> You're like, thanks, son. I'd be like, I'm talking to the bear. <laughs> no, hey, you guys have been a lot of fun. You guys have been a lot of fun. You guys have been a lot of fun. Guys, what do you think? You want to talk to him a little bit?
So, did, so did you always um did you always want to like be a stand up, be a comedian? No, I didn't even realize what stand up that you could do stand up. Like I didn't until I was like twenty six or twenty seven. I went to an open mic and I didn't realize that you could like do stand up. I thought it was like oh there's a comedian, <laughs> they're hilarious. But I loved stand up my whole life. I just didn't know you could. And then I drove from North Carolina to here, broke down in Louisiana. I had to live there for a year. No and shit. then my first open mic. That's true. That's <laughs> crazy. Wow. Yeah, Louisiana's tight though. Go there. So uh, what you what you what you do when you broke down? You're just like, this is my place now. Yeah, I just found a job and shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I got, I got lucky. I had a good job. I was like the bar manager of the the Superdome, like the sink. For, like, oh shit. The sink. Yeah. Yeah. So I got lucky. It's probably white privilege. Uh, <laughs> you think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That sound. was on your resume? You're yeah. Like, I'm here. White, I broke down. down. That's the only thing on my resume. Yeah. <laughs> it just says white privilege on it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what did Shane Gillis say? What did Shane Gillis? He's like, you gotta use it. This is oh, Shane Gillis yeah, said, yeah. if you don't use it, isn't that more racist? <laughs> She's like, <laughs> <laughs> So you broke down Louisiana and you're like, I'm just living here now and that's when you started stand up in Louisiana? No, I didn't even know. That's crazy too because I didn't know that there was such a scene in New Orleans because I was in New Orleans, like not just Louisiana. Oh, okay. I was in like the middle of New Orleans. And, uh, I didn't realize there was a scene like Hannibal came out of there. Mark Norman did a bunch in New Orleans. Oh, Mark Norman, yeah. Mark Norman's from Louisiana. And like, oh, I was watching that later, and I was like, what? Like, I could have been doing comedy the whole time. But I never would have left New Orleans. I'm, not, I'm, I'm really an alcoholic. That was a real bit. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you broke down drinking and Louisiana. I would have, I would have stayed there. Like, wait, there's a stage? <laughs> yeah. Nah. And then like, you made the move to San Diego after that. Yeah. That's yeah, my boss rented me a car because I didn't have a license. You rented your car from Louisiana to San Diego? Uh, Did you put a Texas place on it so I didn't get pulled over? You're a good boss. Shout out to Reed Ingram. You're just watching this. And you just were watching this. <laughs> and you just returned it? it? You returned it to San Diego? Yeah, Avis. Okay, and you're just like, fuck it. Just a guy named Avis, not the Just Avis. <laughs> He's like, Texas place, checks out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, that's awesome. I actually read too. You grew up. Uh, did you grow up in Maine too? I, yeah. I kind of googled you a little bit. So yeah. You grew up. Well, I guess it's one of the thirteen states when you were when you were moving. Down. <laughs> I thought you were talking like colonies for a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the well, thirteen states. Colonies. Colonies. Fuck you. New Jersey. Man. <laughs> yeah. One of the originals. Yeah. The. Uh, no. Yeah. I'm from Maine originally. That's where I was born. Okay. Uh, and I would go up there all the time uh, for like in the the summer. Like, yeah. My aunt, my great aunt and uncle had a thirty eight foot yacht that they saved up their whole life. He like ran furnaces his whole life to save up for like a boat. Oh wow. And, I, and then he had two lobster boats and we went out. I grew up on a lobster boat from like five to 13. Nice. Yeah. Thank God. I had the best shoes when I was 12. Yeah. <laughs> you know how much money you make on a lobster boat? <laughs> it did, my dad was jealous. Got that lobster <laughs> money. <laughs> Come back from the summer with like fucking Rolex on. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of gonna, lobsters now, a lot of lobsters. You're gonna love me instead of great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, so you've been doing comedy. You've been doing comedy a while, then I guess since you kind of started there in San Diego and stuff. What's the uh, biggest screw up that happened to you while you were on stage? The biggest screw up? Yeah. Um, man, there's a lot. Like San Diego's got to be crazy because you're like gaslight. Yeah, I mean, well, if you're talking about the club, the like, gas lamp, that's like, yeah, I'm we're talking about like the gas. Lamp. There's been so People many. Like, what the fuck? There was a the two women have literally pissed on our door. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Like one cock. Like her leg up because she got kicked out and pissed on the door. Yeah, we had to close the door. <laughs> uh, and there was another lady who was just out of her mind on drugs. She was in the show too, but she's on some something and, and she just had her titties out on the window. <laughs> just it wouldn't leave. The cops couldn't get her off. Get her off I the swear. window? No, she like she and she shit herself and it was crazy. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. She shit herself with her. That's real white privilege. That's just white lady. You just shit yourself. You're like, let her do her thing. Let her finish. Let her finish. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. She's having a bad night. <laughs> Jesus. Well, what's the uh, what's the best thing someone has ever said to you after a show? Like advice or something, or even just like you know, a compliment uh, that you got after performing. The best thing. Uh, uh, somebody gave me a car. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's true. They give you a car? Yeah, Madhouse oh. guy is so like watching comedy, and then he came and hung out afterwards, and I was like, yeah, I'd be doing a lot more shows if I had a car, you know. And he's like, I have two. You want one? I was like, fuck you. Holy you know, shit. Like, fuck you, dude. Shut up, dude. And he's like, no, for real. And he was like, yeah, you know Matt Bird, the guy. Uh, yeah. He was, yeah, he he was there. He gave, he, oh. No, he was there with the guy, and we were at my house drinking and stuff. And he was, I was like, who waits till tomorrow when we sober up? 
and then you can give me a car. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? And then he called his friend to come pick us up. His friend took us to the car, gave him a car. Holy oh, shit. Was his name Avis? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was the same car. It's the same car. <laughs> it's actually crazy. Cool. I gave you a box of chocolate tonight, so I feel yeah. like it's the same kind of thing. The cheapest box, too. I saw the other comics box. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, Josh, dude, thank you so much yeah, for doing this show. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. Guys, one more time, Joshua and Rex. How you doing? Okay. 
that was fucking awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> she did a, oh my god. You girls are so incredible. <laughs> Look, we're gonna don't don't actually cut the tape, but I'm gonna cut this out. You're cut probably the, the best musical guest we ever had. Oh wow. That was incredible. <laughs> yeah, you were just the energy everything you had. Thank you. Yeah, we never danced in sweaters like this. <laughs> yeah, I like Christmas sweaters for this occasion. <laughs> <laughs> the, the set was hot as hell. Come on, give it up one more time. Wow. Yeah. 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 It was so great. Yeah. I, I love you girls so much. We met a couple years ago at uh, Darcy, Darcy Rose's. Darcy Rose Burns' is is surprise birthday her, party. Her birthday 21st rose. 21st birthday. 21st birthday, yeah. birthday rose. Yeah. yeah. I, I seen your mom. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh my God, I see, you know, remember me? And she was like, I have no idea who you are. You know, I was like, your mom. Your mom's here. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you guys were so, it was so cool to like meet you there and then like just seeing your music and stuff. It was just, Thanks. you guys are awesome. Thank you. Um, and you said you didn't go viral on TikTok, but I don't know if you know this or not, but <laughs> you have over 500,000 streams on Spotify. We do. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Woo! Thank you. So, um, and I asked this, I, did, I asked this to everybody, what were, what were you like as kids? What was the dream of it all? Did you always want to be musicians and singers and? We always wanted to be on another late night show. Yeah. For sure. The best answer ever. The best answer No, but we grew up kind of the same way. Yeah, like, like, like on different parts of America. Yeah, we both like would dress up and sing Beyonce songs and Diana Ross songs. And like dance in stuff. front of our parents and family. Yeah. Like, look at me. <laughs> and there, there's a YouTube video of her doing Crazy in Love and a feather boa. As a child, there's teeth missing. <laughs> You're from Detroit and Dallas. Yes, I'm Detroit. And you're Dallas. Dallas yes. So how long have you guys known each other? Since, like, I moved here. Since 2013. Oh, okay. I moved in 2014. Oh, since <laughs> 2013. But you knew that, I knew that I knew her. Yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah, to know her and knew, knew her. her out Yeah, there. we went to music school together. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jamaican. <laughs> um, I met her on my first day on my, at my first class, and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. She looks like Marie Alexa. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so funny and so confident, and I just love her so much. I'm not confident. Yeah, I, was like, I, know, I, know. I love that. You know, Adam and Sean met on the first day that they moved to LA, too. Yeah. Together, yeah. Are you guys a duo? No. <gasps> Should we go on a duo we double date? <laughs> <laughs> love that. That's amazing. So, right away, you two knew that you're like, this is going to be, we're going to be best friends. No. Well, no. no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> They gossip. We, okay. we were arch enemies. Yeah, I was like, I hate that thing. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we She's like, I've seen your video with your tooth out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we liked each other immediately, but we weren't like best friends for like years. Yeah, like a slow burn relationship. We're like, like super introverted. Yeah, yeah. And like, uh, we don't like doing a lot of things. We don't like ever. making the first move no. in any sort of thing ever. So it was like. <laughs> You know, like when two magnets are the same and they're just like pushing away. <laughs> we were like snapping to, until one of us switched, and now we've been just stuck. The one of us is me. I proposed to her. I got on one knee. I said I would stop messing around if she would just be my duo partner. You know what I mean? Will you be Flyanna? I will, boss. Exactly. The me. problem was that she didn't respond to text messages. Oh, so how, how are we going to be friends? Like, yeah. I would be like, because I'm already uh, very anxious. She left you on the a lot? Yeah, yeah, I would be like, hey. I, all I would say, all, all I had the courage to say was, hey. Uh, like uh, three days later. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Like three months later. Oh, hey, girl. Uh, I'm, I'm in Swiss, Sweden. I'm here to hang out. You were in Sweden? Yeah, for like a year or so. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Norwegian? Is that they were in Scandinavia. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> they are now. I love that. Well, right now, I mean, so your first, uh, so you, you kind of like got up the courage to say hey, and she was like, three months later, she was like, okay, girl, maybe we'll do something. We would just hang out sporadically, and then one day she was just, yeah, she proposed. That's yeah. awesome. And then you came out with your first single, what, 2017, 2018? 2019. 2019, okay. October, I think, and that was Boss. 
I love it. Yeah. Extra Mara Nara Saucy. I love it. I love it so much. Um, I, that's what I love about your music, though. It's so it's so catchy and just so cheery and it's just so yeah, fun. So and fun. that's what makes it. And you two are just full of energy, which makes it amazing. Which is why you have half a million streams on Spotify. You know, yeah. you're just blowing up Woo! right there. Thank you. I love that. Woo! Um, so you're already going to be uh, you're going to be stars. I mean, come on, you guys yeah. are going to take. Top ten yeah. Billboard charts. You don't need we Santa. Asked Santa, yeah. we asked Santa but you so let's see. You don't need Santa. You got yourselves, and that's what you're gonna, I'm, gonna go for. I'm telling you. Um, so, what's another thing that's on your bucket list? Well, we want to get a sink, and so like <laughs> not a not kitchen, like an sink. actual sink, <laughs> not, not a kitchen <laughs> sink or a bathroom sink, but like when your songs are like playing on like a Netflix show, show or like awesome. a car commercial or something. Yes. Yeah, so that. that's visibility and checks. Okay. Yes. <laughs> he wants the checks. Give us the checks. And to be on Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. You don't want to let him do a show right now, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you just, Mike? Listen, when you, well, when you get on Jimmy Kimmel, I want you to be like, listen, we've done this before. We've, we've already done this before. And this isn't our first rodeo. Right, right, right. Have you heard of another late show tonight with Mike Perkins? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to bring you up on our first late night. I would yeah. love that. On TV. Always. I would love that. Um, Jimmy will be like, the Mike, can you grab me a coffee? <laughs> yeah. Jimmy's like, thanks, bud. You got the donuts? donuts. <laughs> and I'm like, anything for you, Jimmy. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I know if I am a boss, but okay, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, so if you could plan the next 30 years in the business. Whoa. <laughs> How would you plan 30 years? Well, I mean, think, but you already, you already have that. <laughs> well, I feel fucking old now. I have no right. idea. Um, but if you could plan the next 10, 20 years or anything, like in the business, where do you see yourself going? Because you're already full of such great... Lunchboxes, okay. TV uh, shows, right. movies, Wonder Bread, <laughs> Wonder Bread, <laughs> the Wheaties Box, we want it all. Diana Bread. That's yes. right. That's exactly, you get it, Brandon. I love it. That's awesome. A toaster and then like you toast it and then it has your like your faces yeah, on the yeah. screen. Yes, yes, that's a good idea. Right? We're not gonna give you credit for that, but we're gonna That's take fine, it. it's fine. Just take it with Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> and then I'll just come out and be like, you guys order toast, you know, and then I'll just have your faces on. And it'll be great. Um, so what's the hardest, what's the hardest you two ever laughed? Your best friends, what's the hardest you've ever oh laughed? Gosh. Even in your life or separate or whatever. I don't know if there's a particular Besides my moment. monologue up top. When oh, yeah, that definitely tonight. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> What's the hardest I've ever laughed? Um, no, she really makes me laugh all oh, the time. Like, I, I can't even think of a particular moment. Is there something particular? Because you say I'm funny. Like, so if you were like. so funny. No, but she's funny all the time. But I don't know. I can't think of. Uh, we laugh really thing. hard with each other. That's all right. the time. Over yeah. nothing. It can yeah, be it can be really the smallest smallest thing. Like, it, it wouldn't be funny if we told you. What it is. But it's funny to you two. Which yeah, makes yeah. It, which makes it yeah. Do you have a particular? I also personally love falling, like people falling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is what I need in my life. Um, I'm not like that. I have empathy, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? And she's on the ground like, like oh, I'm not calling anybody. Yeah, I love that. Well, thank you so much. You, we can have fun in love with you two. You're amazing. Thank you so much. We're done.
What are you doing these days? Uh, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm dating a girl. You know, I'm dating a girl. Oh. Oh. Trouble we wear a wrong jacket. I, that's what I like when it gets cold in LA. I like when it's cold in LA because you get to see what everyone's interpretation of a jacket is. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people go hard, you know, they wear a huge jacket, don't need it. Sometimes they go light, don't need it. And then I, I get the, all, all the LA terms too. It was raining yesterday. I saw a guy in a denim vest and I was like, brave. <laughs> 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 We have no jacket consequences. Don't blame us, you know? Here, you wear the wrong jacket, it just doesn't go with your look. <laughs> but I've lived in cold places. If you don't wear the right jacket, you could die. <laughs> you know, me, like, hey, where's Greg? Didn't have Gore-Tex. Poor bastard. <laughs> He's dead. <coughs> so long, Greg. <laughs> you ever find yourself complimenting a homeless encampment? <laughs> 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 You know, you're, 
driving somewhere, you see a couch under a freeway, and they built a sunshade with a tarp, and you're like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the counts as an addition, I think. Property values probably went up a little bit. <laughs> I drove by one and they had a bunch of office furniture out there and I was like, hmm, business district. <laughs> People are leaving LA. That's a weird thing to wrap your head around. Here, every day, here's someone's moving out of town. People are leaving LA. They're always leaving. They're like, oh, we gotta get out. Can we get out? People are leaving. So I think to myself, you know, people are leaving. Well, hey, not me. I'm staying. I'm going down with the ship. <laughs> If L.A. was the Titanic, I'd be the dude on the deck who says, Gentlemen, it's been an honor. And then fucking dies. <laughs> you know, a huge parking meter takes me out. And like, Pat's gone. He died doing what he loved, renting one-bedroom apartments. It. Yeah. I have a birthday coming up. Yeah. It's been coming up for about um, 11 months now. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has had that happen. I don't know where you stand on this age-wise. You know you've turned a corner age-wise when your favorite porn star retires. <laughs> you ever had that happen? Follow a porn star's entire career? From rookie to veteran? <laughs> I never thought I would say this. Porn star retired. I was like, wish you the best of luck. <laughs> That's how you can tell a dude's age. You just ask him, what's your favorite porn star do? He goes, oh, uh, you know, she does uh, ads for Herbal Life on Instagram. 41. 41. 41 years old for you. Age is tricky. Age always sneaks up on you. It's very strange, too. I grew up in Texas. And, you know, Texas is from Texas. Yeah. Grew up in Texas, and Texas, there's a lot of misconceptions about Texas, you know, people don't fully know, so I sometimes have to defend my home state to people, especially here, so I'll tell you right now, some of the warmest, nicest, caring people live there. They're so nice, they'll give you the gun off their back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was out somewhere, they were like, where's your gun? I was like, I left it in the car. Kitty, go to my truck, get him my gun, a spare gun, he was cold. Yeah. He was <laughs> There you go, son. That's a good gun. That's my church gun. You'll like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I grew up in Texas. Abortion is tricky here. Texas, no abortions in Texas. They put their foot down there. Very strict. Very pro-life. We love life. However, we love the death penalty, too. So you win some, you lose some. <laughs> I've lived a lot of places too. I've moved a lot. I've lived here a long time. I've lived in nice areas. I've lived in rough areas. Um, you know, you live in a rough neighborhood, you know, when you start using crimes as landmarks. Not many of ever lived in a neighborhood like that. Someone was like, Where's your grocery store at? I was like, mm, Okay, you see that car's on fire? Go two more blocks. <laughs> you hear glass break and take a left. <laughs> How will I know where to go? Just keep going until you're scared. You'll see. <laughs> I wouldn't even set an alarm. I was just like, there's going to be a, a siren at 7.15. <laughs> right on time. So I moved. I moved to a new neighborhood uh, recently. I was living in a predominantly Hispanic part of Los Angeles called uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> 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 yes. I live in a hip neighborhood now. I live in one of these cool hipster neighborhoods. It was pretty cool. First week I lived there, they had a, a protest. I went to it, turned out just be a long line at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was at the back, I was all mad. I got to the front, had the shop, got more mad. I like, nobody can protest at these prices. <laughs> yeah, I've moved a lot. I always hear people say, you know, dating is very hard in LA. I always hear that, but it's like, dating is so hard in LA. So hard in LA, but you know, I've lived in five different cities and I can tell you, I've said that about every single city I've lived in. You ever do that? You ever blame the bad dating on geography? <laughs> oh, Denver, oh, can't date in Denver, high altitude. 
No way. St. Louis, that's a commuter town. No way. Nobody commutes and dates. <laughs> I'm this close to blaming my bad date, dating on daylight savings time. <laughs> going home for the holidays. I don't know if any of you guys are going home for the holidays, but it's great that we're seeing everybody again. It's cool to see everybody's faces face to face. What's great about going home for the holidays, you get to see who's changed, who has a family, who's changed careers. Most importantly these days, you get to see which member of your family is now into vaping. <laughs> Everybody has a member of the family is now into vaping. Oh, shoot. A big old cloud of smoke. You're like, is that a nutrition? <laughs> no, that's Uncle Ray. <laughs> into vaping. You know what's great about vaping? Anytime you tell someone or you ask someone about vaping, all they do is explain vaping. <laughs> they, they, they tell you, like, oh, you know, you heat up the liquid and it turns into vapor. Like, that's how it works, science? <laughs> Thank you. They always will tell you the first words out of their mouth. It's safe. I don't know what that says about any activity when the first words out of your mouth are. It's safe. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm going bungee jumping. You are. It's safe. <laughs> vaping is so weird. My uncle is the one in my family who's into vaping. Which, at first, I was glad because my uncle is a lifelong smoker. So I asked him, you know, hey, hey, has vaping helped you quit smoking? He said, oh, I didn't quit smoking. I started vaping. <laughs> you can do that. The option is on the table. It's like a criminal saying, oh, I didn't quit shoplifting. I just added mugging. <laughs> My uncle loves vaping. He loves it. Tells you all about it. He's like, this is great. They got everything. They got different flavors. I'm like, what flavors do they have? They have grape. They have cherry. They have mint. I'm like, oh, which one's your favorite? Uh, tobacco. <laughs> and loves vaping. He just loves smoking and vaping. That's all he loves. I have sober friends now. I don't know if anybody has sober friends now, but that's trippy. But sober friends. Every week, someone new in my friends group gets sober. How do I know my friends got sober? It certainly wasn't for me asking them. <laughs> anybody who gets sober will let you know. <laughs> Hey, what time do you want me to pick you up? Dude, I'm sober. You know that, right? What are you going to order? Sober. Totally sober. You know what's crazy is anybody who gets sober will always tell you that hitting rock bottom is the most important thing when you decide to get sober. They say, oh, you know, when I hit rock bottom, I knew that was time to change. You got to hit rock bottom, then you know. Here's the thing about hitting rock bottom. If you say you hit rock bottom, you better hope you're right. <laughs> it's like, did you hit rock bottom or was that a long day? <laughs> I've never heard anybody say, like, did you hit rock bottom? Nah. No way for me. <laughs> never heard that. Yeah. We treat sobriety very strange. You ever hear someone say to a crowd, you know, they'll say, like, oh, I'm sober. Everybody will applaud. <laughs> then you can say to that same crowd, hey, who's drinking tonight? Exact same <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> It's like watching sports and rooting for both teams. We do the opposite with drugs. That's the weirdest thing. Someone will say, hey, I'm clean and sober. Haven't touched a drug in 10 years. Everybody will go, good job. Keep it up. One day at a time. Then somebody will go, I never touched a drug in my life. Well, I'll go, pussy. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm Patrick. <laughs> Downstairs, we're doing a thing tonight, so we're we're uh, we're moving well, up, baby. Well, I was driving here, 
and I got here, and then I texted her, I was like, Mike, I'm in the wrong place. I'm at a church. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, where do I go? And I'm like, no, 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 do the homily first, and then and then come up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Pray first, and get some holy water, right. and then. Well, I grew up Catholic, so I was like, I know how this works. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's inviting me to a show. Oh, no. I'm in this church now. Yeah. Gonna be I want to tell you about Jesus Christ, our Savior. Okay? <laughs> That's what He's going to tell me about Jesus, and then we're going to have a potluck on Sunday. <laughs> exactly. My mom will show up. Uh, well, thanks, but we've known each other so long, dude. We've known each other since, I think, since I moved here, since 20, 2014. Did you move around the same time? Um, so I moved here in 2014. We're about the same okay. timeline. And we're always kind of like passing. We pass by each other. Pass by each other flappers all the time. Yep, And that's I was true. like, what up, man? And you're like, what's up, buddy? Right. And then we always kind of just see each other, and then yeah. we kind of became friends the past couple years. Yeah, that's true. You invited me to your church. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah, we've become friends. It's so weird because, you know, we would just pass each other. And then it seems when all the shows shut down, we actually connected more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like, hey, Mike, you want to talk on Zoom or you want to do a comedy show on Zoom? Yeah. And that's how we would actually interact. Yeah, we did a bunch of Zoom stuff together, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally true. Um, thank God that's over, right? The Zoom stuff? Right. Good yeah, God. can we all just say Zoom sucks? Yeah. Zoom sucks! Yeah. Oh, God! Zoom just sucks so bad. Get fuck Zoom. Fuck Zoom. Fuck Zoom. I knew it was over when my mom was like, "Turn, to unmute yourself." And my mom knows more about Zoom. It was the weirdest thing about Zoom. Also, is number one, I always knew when people were talking trash in the chats. Yeah. You know, I'd see everybody's face look down in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom meeting or a good good Zoom show, and you're like, all right, good night, everybody. You would click end, and it was just always you sitting in your room by yourself. Dude, I bombed so many Zoom shows, and that was so true. Where I was just like, ah, thank you so much. <laughs> my dog's still barking, ruining my set the whole time too. I'm like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> What the yeah. fuck? Should I make some? The pizza dings? I'm like, yeah, it's ready. <laughs> this is it. Um, I, would, I would always, like, you tell a joke, and then no one would laugh, and you'd be like, bad joke or Zoom delay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah just, good, good show, just the delay. My, my first live show back, I was like, must be the Wi Fi. Yeah. <laughs> sure. uh, Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so what were you like as a kid? What was the dream of it all, man? Mike, is that a real question? Yeah. What was I like as a kid? Is this therapy? What were you, what were you like as a kid? <laughs> if you can lay down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was I like as a kid? Did you always want to be a st uh, comedian? Like, what, what was the dream? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Mike. I wanted to be a CPA. Yes, I wanted to be a <laughs> <laughs> I was like, welder. I wanted to be a welder. I wanted to get my GED and then into welding. Yeah, I, I always did, but I never tried it until way later. So yeah, I was I was always into comedy. I was always into movies and stuff. But it never occurred to me that you would do it, that you would actually attempt to do it. I never knew anybody who did comedy. I never knew anybody who did anything in the entertainment world. So yeah. it was never never an option until way later. I never even thought you could do it. Well, you grew up in Texas, right? So it wasn't like I mean, Texas has a scene, but I guess you weren't like really around the. Yeah, I wasn't around was anything. Like, yeah. I saw like a magician once, and I was like, "How did he do that?" <laughs> 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 yeah, to me. And then yeah. you're like, that's my Uncle Ray. He's baby. Right. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, it was a Chris Rock magician. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And uh, so you started comedy, I read, in uh, Salt Lake, though, right? Yeah. When you moved to Salt Lake. Salt Lake City, I started comedy there. Okay. And Salt Lake is a, a very underrated town. It gets a weird rap because it's predominantly Mormon. Um, and predominantly <laughs> Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> But it's super nice. Everybody's nice there. So if you grew up, where I grew up, you know, it was a normal town, lots of crime, lots of everything. So I go to Salt Lake, everybody's nice, and I'm like, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I started comedy. And Salt Lake City is an interesting town because it's very outdoors. It's very, it has a huge ski industry. It's very, very outdoor industry. It's the only town that simultaneously has the most in-shape people with the most out of shape people. <laughs> Maybe in the same town, you'll meet someone and be like, I did three marathons this last year. And someone else will be like, it doesn't look like people left the house. Like, yeah. They all live there. Great city. I had three cheeseburgers in an hour. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Salt Lake is a great town, though. Great, and it has a comedy scene. Yeah. We never believe that Salt Lake has great comedy. There. That's great. So that's where you kind of broke in. That's where you start. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing that happened to you in grade school? Ooh, grade school. Um, how long is this show? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, this story, I always tell this story. I wasn't a super social kid. So there was an eighth grade dance. And I was like, oh, I'm not gonna go to this dance. My mom made me go to the dance. She's like, you're going to the dance, you're gonna to talk to girls, you're gonna go make friends, you're going to the dance. I'm gonna buy you um, some nice clothes to go to the dance. And this was maybe circa mid 90s. Mm -hmm. So she bought me black pants, and at the time, uh, shirts with a banded collar were really popular at the time. Uh -huh. So she gets me a black shirt, banded collar, black pants, I'm like, oh, hello, handsome. I'm gonna go to this dance now. <laughs> so I go to the dance with my banded collar. I see my friend friend group there. So I go walk up to him. First words out of their mouth: Hey, why are you dressed like a priest? <laughs> <laughs> I look, and uh, he was right. I look like a priest. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was up there. But oh, wow. you know, by the end of the dance, like I was like, uh, peace be with you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I totally had to lean into it. <laughs> I look like a priest. You're like, bless it, bless it, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, you know. That's why you see the church coming up here and you're like, whoa, whoa, flashbacks. I had flashbacks? <laughs> yeah, I grew up uh, very, in a very Catholic family, or as it's commonly known, Hispanic. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, Italians are Catholic all the time, too. Yeah, that's true. I know true. a new Catholic growing up, you know. Did you have, do you have Catholic guilt? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I've never had me saying guilt. I guess, I guess it means I have guilt. I never had any guilt either. People yeah. were like, oh, I have the guilt. I never went to church on Sunday. I was like, I'm out. See, it was only the older, it was like my grandmoms that were like really into it, and we just like went to church and like, mm -hmm. like I didn't go to church every Sunday. Because my dad worked casinos, so we'd always get out of it and be like, oh, we can't go, he's sleeping for work. Because he worked night shift, so I never had to go to church, which was fucking great. Yeah, it was cool. Like, that was kind of like, and we'd have to go to my grandma sometimes too. But like, yeah, I didn't really, I think I was Catholic, but wasn't like, Crazy into it. My folks were very, very Catholic, um, very, uh, they were very much in the routine. So the big strategy becomes for every kid is how do you get out of church? Yeah. You can, there's only a few ways to do it. You can fake an illness, is one, you can claim your homework, would be another one. And at some point, I started sneaking a radio into church <laughs> so I could listen to, to Sunday football games. <laughs> was my, like, it, I always wanted like a little heist <laughs> to get out of church. It would be like, and Jesus said, touchdown Raiders! <laughs> yeah, it was about that time my mom bought me that banded collar shirt. Right? <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> um, what's one piece of advice that you've gotten that you took to heart and kind of take everywhere you go in life now? Um, well, I think it's important to have perspective. You know, like your goals evolve, you know, when you pursue something. So you start somewhere, you get into a while, you adjust your goals, you adjust your goals. So, you know, like when you're young, you're like, you know, I want to do something amazing with my life, you know, and then you live a little bit and then you end up saying, you know, I want to do something worthwhile with my life. And then, you know, further on the road, you're like, I just want to make it to Wendy's by 11. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you should adjust your goals as you progress. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, there's only one way that we can close the show on every night, ladies and gentlemen. Every show. Do you guys know what that is? Exactly! Guys, we need to get the round of applause going. Get it going! For the best house band you've ever heard of, it's the show of the Battle of the Show! songs for you guys. Uh, again, thank you Staples Center for coming out. This is cool, sold out arena. Um, we are the show. For those of you that haven't been here before, appreciate all you guys coming by here. That's the day of our day. Uh, we're here every month doing this crazy thing. Um, I went to uh, church with your mom. That's not a joke. That's a real joke. 
<laughs> we went to Nebraska and we yeah. played. You guys were talking about. We went to Nebraska and did some shows there. And I, I just want to be nice. Your mom's very, very much Catholic. Yeah, very, very Catholic. Time. And I was like, I'll go with you. Okay, let's go. And so <laughs> he didn't even fucking go. It was just me and his mom. Well, I totally know what Patrick was talking about. You gotta know how to get out of going to church. Yeah, so we got fucking drunk as shit the night before, and that was his reason to get out of it. And I still was like, nah, I made a promise to your mom. Go for it. So I went. And now I'm like, yeah, it was great. It was cool. But we get there, and and we get to this church, big old old Catholic church, and, she, and we're just all these people. And she's like, we're going over here. I was like, what do you mean? She said, we're going over here. She got a little fob, as if that's a thing. I thought it'd be like an old key or something. And she was an old fob. And we go in the back door. Her and I sat in a glass booth. Wow. A VIP booth, just looking down on everybody <laughs> in this huge church. Just me and his mom. And the whole time I just kept being like, what the fuck do you do? Yeah, his <laughs> mom transcended cat Catholicism. She was like, and we got in the car, she's like, I had a great time. I was like, I had an experience. That's what that was. <laughs> That was great. Um, I had to bring up like Patrick was talking about uh, doing stuff to skip church, and this is this is a true story. When I was very young, uh, my oldest brother is eight years older than me, so he was already driving, mm -hmm. and so I said I said to my mom, "I'll just go to church with my brother Jason when he goes to the later mass." Mm -hmm. And so this is all a ploy. We would just drive and get the bulletin, and then go to the mall. So I skipped church, and this is where we're at. I'm about ten. We skip church and we go to the mall and go to a Walden Books. And I go over to the magazine stand and I see a Playboy. And I open it up and see my first naked woman when I skip church. So it is true, you go straight to Satan. You just go. You pass church, you go to hell. It's, it's quick. I stop. Not praying to Jesus, looking at muffs. Like, immediately. Muffs. I like that. Someone said, Muffs. That's funny. Um, so, uh, we, uh, it kind of explains why we're standing here like this now. Uh, many years later, we are this. Yeah. Uh, so, it's the Christmas season. Yeah. And we've got two couple songs for you guys. We'll send you out on your way. Appreciate it again. Uh, this is a, this is a Christmas song. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Little Moody. Uh, that was just like that. Magic. And, uh, this is a Christmas song. This is a true story. A lot of people don't know this about Christmas. Yeah, like there's a sinister side to the North Pole. Very dark. You know, side. we all know about the good stuff, but yeah. we don't know about yeah, yeah, the underbelly. This, so is to speak. A, this is a this is a real thing. So just pay attention. <laughs> and it's a true story. Yeah. This is a love song. It's called Reindeer's Requiem. <laughs> Christmas is here, the time for all to spread good cheer. But there's just one story we forgot to tell about a lonely reindeer and his living hell. Ring the bells, bum 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 bum. Ring the bells, bum 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 bum. Ring the bells. Of 
picture we can't understand. So while we are tucked away in your bed, you hear the cries from reindeer Benjamin. <laughs> Cause we 
we're doing cocaine Cause we're insane Your mom does cocaine And it rots a brain We're having fun, fun With her numb gums Then we come, come On her tum tum Then your mom, she ate my jizz Licked that shit right off her tits Then we took some photos in a van Posted it on Instagram, a picture for our adoring fans. It was your mom getting back in a van. Your mom does coke in a van with two guys from her favorite band. She took too much and then she died. We left her by the In the mud <laughs> with a thud, hold for a flood to wash away. Hey, hey, your mom's body, she was a hottie. We had to go, cause we had a show. <laughs> underscore I want to give him more money and uh, we got some toys for him too so thank you so much guys you guys are awesome